last year, I participated in TI Planet's annual back to school programming contest. And thanks to SlyVTT and the rest of my teammates, I was able to receive a Zero Calculator ZGC3 prototype. Just last week, the calculator arrived, and I thought it would be interesting to open it up and see what's inside, along with sharing my first impressions of the calculator now that I actually own one. Before I get into the rest of the video, though, I'd really like to thank Kreider and the rest of the team at TI Planet for putting together another awesome contest, and of course also thank Zero for contributing to the prizes. The calculator comes in a cardboard box with a smooth matte finish, though with the branding on the outside I'm beginning to wonder if it's actually empty. After opening it up, I can confirm that the box is in fact not empty. Zero has left a card and pamphlet with some instructions, along with a USB-C cable for charging and of course the calculator itself. Interestingly enough, I noticed later that the instruction pamphlet appears to show an older prototype, though it could be that they printed off extra not anticipating the design change that they made later. The calculator is inside a small plastic bag, and after I took it out one of the first things I noticed was the rubber ring on the outside edges of the device. For some reason I had forgotten that this even existed, but it gives the edges of the calculator a nice grip and I suppose could also help if the calculator is dropped. One con of this is that it made the case a little tricky to get on and off, but it could be I'm just doing something wrong. I didn't spend a lot of time messing around with the calculator yet, but I will note a few other observations and things I noticed. Firstly, the finish on this prototype is extremely shiny as others have already mentioned, though this will be fixed in the final model. I really didn't get how shiny it was until I saw it in person, but it almost seems like the keys are more reflective than the screen, which is pretty shiny. For some reason, it also seems like you have to hold the power button down a bit to get the device to turn on. This feels a little weird to me, but hopefully it will be fixed as well. All of the keys take a little bit more force to press down than most calculators I've used, but I did get used to this pretty quickly, so it's not a big deal. Looking at the software, the font actually doesn't seem too small or hard to read, which I do remember seeing some people concerned about. The calculator has some built-in apps, but judging by the fact that there's no section for apps in the memory management menu, I'm wondering whether the calculator will actually support transferable apps like the TID4 Plus CE in the future or not. As I mentioned before, another thing that I found disappointing is the current lack of assembly support, though Zero has made comments suggesting that something like this might be possible in the future. I also took a look at the Zero Basic editor along with the file structure for Zero Basic programs, and it seems like they're actually stored as just text files, which makes transferring and editing them on a computer not very difficult if you modify the file extension. Looking at the back of the device, I found four 1.5mm hex bit screws. I would have expected there to be some near the top of the calculator, possibly under the rubber foot pad, but I guess there just aren't. I feel like this could make the calculator a little bit more flimsy, as the upper part of the calculator has less to hold it together. However, it seemed to do fine, so I'm not really sure. After removing the screws, the back and front are held together by some plastic clips around the edges, similar to TI's calculators, which can be easily pried apart using a tool so as not to damage them. The battery is glued to the back portion of the calculator with a connector to the main board on the other half. I'm a little disappointed by this, as it means that the battery is significantly more of a hassle to replace than the TID4 Plus CE and TI Inspire, though of course the simplest battery to replace is the AAA batteries that are still used in Casio calculators and older TI calculators. The rubber ring around the edge of the calculator can be taken out, and there's a small plastic insert at the end for the test mode LED. The LED itself is on a small board connected to the main board by a ribbon cable, and it slots into the plastic at the end of the rubber ring. At the bottom of the main board is a version number saying 2.1. Given that the name of the calculator itself is the ZGC3, this is kind of interesting, and I'll put on the screen the version numbers on the previous two models' boards as well. On the left of the board, you can see the external RAM chip, which appears to be an ISSI IS42S16400J-6TLI. According to a datasheet I found online, it has a size of 8 megabytes, or 64 megabits, which matches what I saw in TI Planet and Chemitex breakdowns of the specifications. The chip has a frequency of 166 megahertz, which is faster than that of both previous two prototypes. To the right of the RAM is the CPU, which is a GigaDevice GD32F470ZKT6 ARM chip. The chip has 3 megabytes of built-in flash and 256 kilobytes of built-in RAM, along with a max clock speed of 240 MHz. 
Like the previous RAM chip, I'll link the data sheets for this and some of the other parts in the description if you're curious in learning more about the exact specifications. Finally, the small chip to the very right is a Winbond 25Q64 FVSIQ external flash chip, which has a size of 8 megabytes, like the external RAM. Above all of these chips is the reset button, which has a separate pin in the back of the case which presses it. The pin is not secured to the back in any way and is very small, so I definitely should have been more careful when I took it apart, in case I almost lost it. Over here are four contacts for debugging, which are compatible with an ST-Link or RP2040 debugger tool according to TI Planet. The screws on the inside of the calculator also use the same 1.5mm hex bit, which is convenient. On the other side we have the keypad. Interestingly, the plastic keys seem to be glued or fastened to the rubber pad in some way, which certainly makes it more convenient to open up than the TID4 Plus CE, whose keypad will fall apart the second it's picked up. The keys seem to be of reasonable quality and the printing is clear, though with the glossy finish they pick up fingerprints almost instantly. The calculator goes back together by basically reversing what I did here. Like I've said previously, I'm excited to see what Zero does with this new product, and there are already a number of confirmed improvements on the way, including a new look for the front of the calculator. While the company does seem to remain optimistic about releasing in the next couple of months for Back to School 2024, I'm a little bit nervous with the speed of recent updates that they'll be ready in time. If you're interested in learning more about the Zero Calculator, The Last Millennial has made a great review of the ZGC3 prototype, and both Chemitech and TI Planet have made in-depth articles covering it as well, which I'll link in the description. As always, this has been Tiny Hacker, and I hope to see you in the next video.